Thinglink is a fantastic online resource that quite literally lets you link things. I love it because one, it is free up to a certain point, and two, it is extremely flexible. Now, in my personal opinion, I don't feel like many educators know about it, and I do feel like they really should. I know as I've started to begin to play with Thinglink that if I had known about it during my 15 weeks of online distance learning, it would have been extremely useful for a range of different circumstances. It's something that now in the future, I'm hoping to use in the lessons that I have in class. Now, there's a range of different ways that you can use this. This tutorial is going to start by showing a couple of examples. Then I'm going to show you a tutorial of how to use Thinklink, really simple. And then number three, I'm gonna show you a couple of ideas that I've had that you could potentially use with your class. Now, this can be accessed with a range of different things. It's available on iPad, it's available through mobile, and it's also available on PC. So before we jump into the tutorial, make sure you like the video. If you aren't already, subscribe to the channel. It is free, just like the online resource. And hopefully you can find a range of different supportive content on my channel. So let's jump into a range of different examples that use Thinglink. So I thought I'd just start by sharing a range of examples that are immediately shared with you when you access Thinglink. So this one here is not a picture that I've taken. It looks very tropical though. Uh, I think it's somewhere in the Maldives, uh, Bora Bora, who knows? So you'll see there's a range of different links that have been added in here. We've got some information here that just tells you about the editor and support. Um, what I really like though is this little link here on the PC version. If you click on that, it actually takes you through to he says, um, it takes you through to Immersive Reader, which is really, really supportive. And I've made plenty of videos about how powerful Immersive Reader can be. So you'll also see here is a lovely video about the uh, Bora Bora Sharks and Rays. Uh, from here, there's a custom icon that's been added in and it just tells you a little bit of information for the picture. And again, I could put that through into Immersive Reader, which is great for the SEN uh, EAL children. If I scroll down, it's a huge image got a home screen here with a range of different photos. And then you've got some lovely calming music that's playing through my ears now. And it's, yeah, just matches the uh, tropical scene. From here, there's nothing, th this is just a, a simple text one. Tip, you can also upload background audio to your interactive images. One thing that's really important to mention is that you can actually link up videos too. Depending on the type of video that you have, you can really start to create some immersive environments for the children, which is great because school trips and things like that might not be possible at the moment. So having these links, these Thinglink videos available, really powerful. So if I just show you another sample video that's been shared by Thinglink already, this is about magpies, so I press play, you'll see that there's a range of different links. Oh, and here's a magpie. So from here, we've got some information. And again, I could put that into immersive reader. There's a few pictures. Stunning. Uh, we've got a few pictures here. And then from there, we've also got Eurasian Magpie and a link to Wikipedia. So again, starts to build up a really fantastic system. In addition, with a video, you can also add links in at specific times. So you can see the links have just changed. If I press pause, I can then tap and just see that little bit of information. And then if I were to click on that, it would also come up with some magpie sounds too. So if we just leave that playing, you can then see the magpie just going along. So there's ranges of different things that you can do with the video. And I wanna show you some other ideas I've got to make things more flexible for your children. This one here, oh, hello, <laughs> will then allow you to tag videos on thing linked to, which I didn't know. So from there then, let's show you how you can make one. So if we click off this for now and click on one that I've uh, made earlier, I feel like I'm on Art Attack. Uh, so from here, you can see I've already added a couple of links. So I've added a picture and this is uh, a video that I've added in. And then I've also added in some audio and this is a, an audio recording. And one of my ideas is that you could add some instructions in there for those children who perhaps struggle to access some of the text. Now we'll make comments about the messy desks in a second. And we're gonna just look at editing it so that you can see how to create. Now, if you haven't already got one, which you won't, you'll just go onto the create and I'll show you that in a second. So it will ask you to convert. And you're gonna convert it. Once that happens, then you'll see that your ability to add a tag is just there in the corner. So here you can see lots of different tags already. And to add them in, all you're going to do is add a tag. You've also got your settings here so that you can uh, either disable the animation. I quite like the animation. You can change the color scheme of your tags and you can also upload audio. And this is the background audio so that you can play it as they open it. So it might just be some instructions that tell you where to find links, but you can also add those specific audio links in for the children too. So that just adds that new element of uh, depth. So to start off with add a tag, 
Within the ad tag, you've got ad text and media. So you've got the picture and text, or you can add picture in a website, but there's also add content from a website as well. So that's another link. And you've just got add a text label. So I'm gonna show you all of them and then show you how to add different icons too. So let's start off with the add text and media. So I've just quickly made it math display. Please check out the times table multiplication grid that I'm going to attach in a second. And I've also added practice on TTRS because that's a website that we use in school. TTRS getting some free promo. Uh, so image from here, then to add an image, you click on this, it's gonna take you through to the computer. You can also add a video again for further support and then you can upload audio. So this is whether you want to just explain what you've said and written for those children who might struggle to access the writing. So. Hi there guys, make sure that you check out the multiplication grid, times table rock stars is linked. And then you've also got some videos that I'm going to put to the side of this display. I'm gonna press done. And then from there, one thing I forgot to do is change the icon and I want that to be a yellow divide sign for maths. I'm gonna drag that into the right place. And then as we click onto that, you can see math display, Please check out the times table multiplication grid, practice on TTRS, and then in my ear, I can hear the audio too. From there, we're gonna add another tag. We're just going to add content from a website, and we're going to add a multiplication song. As you can see, I've changed the logo to a custom video one. So as you click onto that, the video pops up. So now I've got these two here, and it just starts to bring this display, this photo to life a little bit and gives the children lots of different things for them to interact with. And there you've also got a simple text label. I've just put check out the audio below and I'm just gonna drag that across. So the children go across that, it says check out the audio below and that will automatically play as the children hover over it. So there we go. There's a range of different icons that you can also add in. So if we've got, uh, add content from website and we press change icon. You can also upload your own icon as you saw on the example before. Now, from there, you can do a range of different things and some of them are more premium, so I won't bother showing you. Uh, you can simply replace the background and that will allow you to change the background for whatever reason. Some of these are, are more premium, such as folders and download, uh, but you can also rename it, which is useful, and you can then change the privacy settings or edit it. Again, quite useful. If we look at the privacy settings, this means it's public. This links to your organization. This means anyone with the link has access and this is private, so it's only available to you. I would recommend changing it to unlisted just for security reasons, just in case there's anything that is important to you. Press save and then that's going to be available to anyone who has the link. From there, you're gonna press save. This is uh, your media link, but if you wanted to change it to a link, then you can copy this and then share it obviously with your Google Classroom, email, Seesaw, Teams, whatever you're using, that's then available. Other than having share as a link, you can also publish to social and you can publish through Teams, Google Classroom, these you probably won't be dealing with, uh, but you can also publish through email as well, which is important. One of the other ideas as well is to link it to a picture, which then links to Bitmojis, and I'll show you that in a second, but I wanted to show you uh, another idea that I had, another couple of ideas before showing you that. So you can see this picture here has now uploaded. If I tap onto it, it will open up. Now, my thought here was that actually you could set a timetable for the children, but within that timetable, you could then have a range of different links to support that lesson. So not only could you start adding tags such as text and media so that you could have some supportive slides integrated into your images, you could then also have a title, description, and then a website where children could share the work. So like I shared with TTRS as well, for those children who struggle with reading and you know are working at home independent, who are perhaps are in that key stage one area, you can then upload the audio to support that. So today guys, we're gonna be working on maths. We're going to be looking at calculation with addition. Uh, so make sure you check out the content that's attached within the lesson so that you can access the work more effectively. From there, it's gonna upload. Image-wise, you can then, yeah, like I said, upload perhaps some slides that you've created and then lesson one, and then you can support with work as a, as a website. So that's there. If I drag that one up, again, as I always forget, you can change the icon. And if I wanted to add a video, I could add that too. And that could be a video, again, you know, you teaching your recorded lesson for those children who are working uh, from that e asynchronous sort of learning environment where they're learning on demand. So you could add a YouTube video of you teaching in there 
And then you could really start to build up lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four. And again, because that's created there, you could then share that with your learners. And if you're working in a team, you could also sort of like collaborate on that, create one and then share it right with all the learners, which could then save on workflow too. Idea number two is for the children to access ThingLink to share what they understand too. So not only can they share their own audio, they can also access and share links which could have videos in of them teaching something. It could have uh, things that they've written. It can have, well, there's, <laughs> the, the options are pretty limitless to be completely honest with you. So if I'm looking here already, I can click on the edit and then we can add a tag and just start to so just here, I've just added in a little simple text box that just says, you know, in 2000, there weren't very many buildings. Now there's plenty of skyscrapers and insane contrast here in Dubai. Um, but yeah, that's an unlimited thing that, you know, children could really go away and spend a lot of time with just developing their ideas. This could be a multi-lesson thing where they're creating a bit of a project and the options really are pretty limitless with this. The last and final thing that I thought perhaps could be quite useful is to go back to the idea that I had before, this one here, and to link this in a Bitmoji classroom. Now, hear me out. Obviously, Bitmoji classrooms, you can have a range of different links integrated into the pictures. So why not have the picture as a frame and then have that frame, as you click on it, bring you through to the thing link. So to do that, you need to make sure that you're able to share it. So we need the share link going to make sure that that's copied. So as you can see with this Bitmoji classroom, you've got the normal Bitmoji classroom that you've probably seen in the tutorial before, and you've also got a nice picture of the actual classroom with those different displays. Now remember, we've already created the links all for this, so all we need to do now is link up the photo to then add that extra dimension, which is fancy and technical. So if we tap on that, we're gonna to go to the normal insert, link, I've already copied it, so I should just be able to paste it in, apply, and then from there, if the child comes to it, then present. When we then tap on that link, it's going to take them through to the Thing Link app, which then shows them all of this with the different links. Now remember, this is available on a range of different things, such as iPhone, iPad, MacBook laptops, and all those different things. So immediately, we can start to look at these pictures, and it's nice and easy for us to just be able to access those different things, videos, and all sorts of different bits and pieces. And there we go, I'd love to know your ideas too. So that marks the end of the video. If you have any ideas on ways that you're going to use ThingLink with your class that are different to mine, feel free to share them down in the comments so that we can build up a collaborative platform for other educators. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to like it. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel to see more EdTech videos and also videos about teaching here in Dubai. Hopefully I will see you in the next video, but until then, I'm out.